So the 20 series NVIDIA cards just got announced, they're on sale, and you might be sitting at home with your 1060, 1070, whatever, wondering, am I obsolete now? You personally, no, you're not, but are your cards obsolete? That's basically what we're going to be discussing in this here video. We're gonna try to take a look at all of the factors that might influence your decision, not only to buy a new card, but then also feel bad about what you currently have. So with that being said, let's jump into it. After I tell you that today's video is brought to you by our website, UFD Deals. We're gonna be talking a lot about graphics cards, their place in the market, their pricing and if you want to get good deals on your 10 series graphics cards you can check out ufd deals the link will be in the video description we compile the best deals that we can find on gpus and other various gaming components on that website we get affiliate kickbacks it supports the channel make sure that you guys save a little bit of money and keeps the world going around so check out ufd.deals down in the video description if you're interested in saving some money and supporting the channel win-win so let's dive into the main topic. So the big thing that NVIDIA presented was ray tracing at the Gamescom event where they launched the 20 series. Ray tracing, which I've explained several times, is the realistic simulation of light within video games instead of faking light like is done in current video games. So basically photons are hitting my face and ray tracing is the attempt by computers to simulate that. And as you can imagine, with the trillions of photons that are hitting my face right now, there's a lot of computational horsepower that goes behind it. NVIDIA has solved this by giving us new hardware in the graphics cards by introducing tensor cores and ray tracing cores, things that we do not see on a 1080 Ti. This has CUDA cores, and that's basically it. It doesn't have ray tracing cores, which help actually trace the rays, and it doesn't have tensor cores, which help to use machine learning and AI to figure out how to fake ray tracing where it's not easily done to do it in real time because there's parts of the scene that don't need to have full on ray tracing in order to get it to look proper. So they use AI and machine learning, which is done by the tensor cores, to actually simulate that fake it to some extent to actually reduce the load on the graphics card to make it work. So that sounds really great. It's all good technology. This is all something that we should want. This is all something that we should enjoy because it's going to bring more realistic looking games to gamers, which is something that I think that we all want. Anybody who wants high frame rates, anybody who wants good looking games, if we get this combined, well then it's a win-win situation. And Nvidia is trying to convince us that that is what the RTX 20 series actually does. It brings ray tracing and life like looking games to the consumer in a way that we've never experienced it before. In which case, they're very much right. It absolutely does that. You will get better looking video games on an RTX series card. That is very much true because the 1080 Ti can just not keep up with it whatsoever, nor can a Titan XP, nor can a Titan V because it doesn't have ray tracing cores like the new Turing cards do. However, this is where some of the contentious parts of my discussion might come in. The demos that Nvidia was showing off in the games with ray tracing just weren't all that impressive. Yes, there are realistic shadows. Yes, there are realistic light simulations actually taking place in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in Battlefield 5, in Metro Exodus, which are the three games that they showed off. However, they don't look that good. The games themselves do not look lifelike. The light might, but at what cost is that coming at? How much performance hit are we talking about when we do ray tracing as opposed to the rasterization method that's currently used in video games? Well, it actually appears like some people at Gamescom have gotten their hands on the Shadow of the Tomb Raider demo to actually see what type of frame rate are we looking at. And it appears that at 1080p with ray tracing on with an RTX 2080 Ti, you know, the $1,200 graphics card, they are getting between 30 and 50 FPS average at 1080p with a $1,200 card. The technology is great. The game looks better than it ever will. However, certain people such as myself will not pay $1,200 to play a game at 1080p and not even hit 60 FPS. In my opinion, that's kind of unacceptable. You may disagree. You might think that this is a great advancement in technology, which it absolutely is. But if we look at this from a gaming perspective, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. A lot of PC gamers like to enjoy the fact that one, our games do look better 
anyways, even with the rasterization method. And then two, we get to run them at high refresh rates. If the RTX 2080 Ti can only do one of those two equations, but if you turn ray tracing off, it can do both of those things, well, then it seems like ray tracing might just be a gimmick that we might not necessarily want to pay all that much money for. Some of the demos looked really great that NVIDIA showed off. The Star Wars thing looks fantastic. The Battlefield 5 ray tracing showcase that they had also looks good, but those are not in-game environments where things are happening on the fly. Environments are constantly shifting. The things are perpetually changing, and that will lead to a drop in frame rate per second, which is not something that we personally want as gamers, not something I want. You may want to make that trade off, but I personally think that even with the new cards bring something completely new to the table, brand new technology, it's not enough to convince me to actually switch over. And here is where we get to the bit about the 10 series. The 10 series, the 1060, 1070, 1070 Ti, and all the way up, do not have ray tracing cores and they do not have tensor cores. But given the demos that are being shown on a game that should be ready to launch, Rise of the Shadow of the Tomb Raider is coming out September 14th before Turing even it ships. If it's performing that badly with ray tracing on, people will be turning ray tracing off, which essentially means that the technology that's baked into them isn't going to be utilized to the extent that the companies are thinking that it's going to be used for, which then leads us to the chicken and the egg scenario. Game developers, will not develop for ray tracing unless enough people are actually going to play with a platform that can actually support that. But then you need the people on the platform to actually play the games in order to incentivize game developers to make ray tracing games. I think this is where things are going to fall apart for ray tracing, for RTX, and especially for the price point that they have it at. The new series cards cost way too much to enable mass adoption of ray tracing. Games such as Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Metro Exodus, and Battlefield 5 are being developed for consoles primarily because that's where the vast majority of gamers are and that's where the vast majority of money is. So that means that ray tracing will be an afterthought to the console development, which means that either we're going to get terrible ports with ray tracing slapped on, or in the case of something like Final Fantasy 15, we will have longer times between ports so that they can actually perfect the PC version of it. And as a gamer, Personally, my thoughts here is that I don't necessarily agree with having to wait that long in order to get a playable version of the game. I'm more about enjoying the game than I am about waiting to have the very best graphical experience, which some of you graphical you know, snobs might not agree with, which is totally fine. You're allowed to have that perspective. However, I think I'm speaking for the majority of gamers here. I think I'm speaking for the majority of people who don't have $1,200 to spend on graphics cards. And that leads me to the point of the 1080 Ti is going for $700 new right now. You can get it used for $500, which means the RTX 2080 Ti costs either 71% more or 120% more, which would make people believe that's the type of performance improvement that you're going to get in these games. And I simply think that is not the case. The RTX 2080 Ti and NVIDIA are all pushing ray tracing because they know that they can't base it on the actual frame rate or experience of the game, they have to base it on graphical fidelity. However, from what we're seeing at Gamescom, and it may not hold true for all games in the future, but from what we're seeing right now, ray tracing is not implemented in such a way where people will actively want to use it on their games. They'll turn it off so that they can get actually acceptable frame rates at higher resolutions and enjoy the game in a way that they can with a 1080 Ti. But when it costs $1,200, you could get two 1080 Ti's used and run those in SLI for the games that support it. Or you can build an entire PC around that $500 1080 Ti for the same price as a 2080 Ti. Or the 1080 Ti would cost the same as a 2070. And even though Jensen said that the 2070 is going to be a Titan XP, he didn't give us enough metrics for it. Looking at the CUDA cores, looking at the clock speeds, and looking at the memory bandwidth, it looks like the 2070 is gonna be on par with the 1080 Ti. Given how the 2080 Ti is performing in ray tracing, a lesser card with lesser ray tracing likely will not have a good experience at 1080p in the modern ray tracing games that are coming out. Currently, at the price point that the 20 series launched at, all that did was make the 10 series the lesser cards and cost less than all of the market in 
the 20 series. So the RTX 2070 is going for $600 on the Founders Edition. You can pick up a 1080 Ti used for $500 to $600. If you don't need ray tracing, you're getting an actual better gaming card more than likely. And if not, you can save money by picking it up for only $500. Then down the line, if you're willing to buy used, the 10 series is still just as relevant because the 20 series doesn't look like it's gonna outperform them in traditional gaming experiences. And even in ray tracing, it doesn't look like it's going to be that phenomenal of an experience. It could be that we're just in the infancy and that down the line ray tracing games will pick up, but then why wouldn't we just wait for the next gen series of cards that will be coming out? Because seven nanometers is on the precipice for AMD. They should be launching those next year. And then it seems like Nvidia is also shopping around for seven nanometer chips based on what TSMC is saying. So we could expect seven nanometer graphics cards from Nvidia to drop relatively soon, which means that we would get a second generation of ray tracing cards within a year to 18 months, which at that point you would think that ray tracing has developed to the point where it's actually adoptable for a lot of different people. And then it would make more sense to pick up the 20 series cards when they come down in price or to pick up the brand new 21 series or 3000 series, whatever Nvidia is gonna call it then. Basically, I'll sum it up to this. The way it stands right now, ray tracing is an early adopter technology, which Nvidia is charging an early adopters tax for, which leaves the 10 series to still be priced really competitively with the cards that have been announced by Nvidia themselves. It doesn't make these cards obsolete in my mind. It just seems like they got shifted down the totem pole a little bit and they're perfectly good cards to game on. So if you have a 10 series, I would expect that you can suffice it for now and that the 20 series is gonna be priced out of what you would want for performance increase. Because if you're paying 100% more for a graphics card, one would hope that you would get at least 100% more performance, but it doesn't appear like that's going to be the case. And this unfortunately leads us to the point that it doesn't look like 10 series cards are gonna fall down all that much in price below what they are now because there's no market drive to do it. If the RTX 2070 costs $600 and you can get a 10 ATI for 500, there's a decent price gap between them and I don't see the need for the 1080 Ti to go much lower than that. Personally, I wouldn't be holding out for great used deals on 10 series cards right now, except for the people who might be jump jumping ship to the early adopter 20 series hype train. So for me, the 10 series is only dead if you're super mega hyper hyped into ray tracing and you absolutely want it at the sacrifice of all resolution, all frame rate, be darned you will have the best looking gaming experience no matter what. But personally, I can't sacrifice my gaming experience to have console-like frame rates to just have better quality. It's not something that I can do. I don't think it's something that you can do. And I don't see the price of the 10 series dropping hotter than our Linus Tech Tips disc track that should be coming out relatively soon. But I want this to be a conversation. I don't think the 10 series is obsolete. I don't think graphics cards are any more dead than they were before the announcement, but I wanna hear what you think. Let me know, do you think that the 10 series is now obsolete? Is ray tracing just gonna smash these cards to smithereens and they're not even worth buying? Let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And don't forget that this video is brought to you by UFD Deals. So if you are looking for a good deal on a 1060 or any of the NVIDIA cards, you can use UFD Deals. Link will be for that will be in the video description and we try to help you save a little bit of money. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I will see your smiling faces in the next video. Love you too.